Soon there will be nine billion of us on the planet. Nine billion human souls, each with their own dreams, struggles, hopes. One thing we all share is the need to have enough food to eat. But every day hundreds of millions go hungry. It feels like a depressing fact of life, but it's not. It's an absurd injustice because we know that today the world is actually producing enough to feed everyone. So what on earth is going wrong? In Haiti, four people died in riots which followed a sharp rise in the price of food. The last few years we've seen rioting across the globe as people struggle to cope with rocketing food prices. Demonstrators looted shops. Tomorrow the challenges of climate change, land and water scarcity means it's going to get even harder for the world to feed itself. So what then? We travel to India, home to a quarter of the world's hungry, to look for answers. In the last couple of years, we've seen very sharp increases in the price of food items in particular. And this really hurts the poor because food is a large proportion of what they spend their incomes on. Uh, when food prices rise, they cut back to bare minimum of what they eat. So the poor in India, for example, if they can't afford anything else, will eat a piece of bread with an onion and some salt. And in the last couple of years, we saw very sharp increases in the price of onions. So the price of onion is a very sensitive issue in India because if that goes up, there's nothing else to fall back on. There's no diet left. So we need to really make sure that food prices are kept under control because the ones who are hit the worst by it are the poor. Why is this going on? The fundamental reason is global inequality of power and of wealth because people who live in extreme poverty, along with those who are moving out of poverty, and people who live with extreme wealth, they are all interconnected through the global food economy. And it's that interconnectedness when it's badly managed, which is leading to spikes and volatility in food prices. So extreme weather events, the kind that are gonna be caused by climate change, heat waves and droughts from Russia to Australia are spiking up the price of food because major countries' harvests are being lost, oil price hikes, again, ratcheting up the cost of food, the sudden demand for biofuels from Europe and the US, the demand for meat from across Asia, all of these things are putting more and more pressure on the world's grain supply. And that means poor people can't afford the food they need. Our name is Tejinder Sahni. We are living in Mujafatul Bihar. और हमारे खेतीबाड़ी का पहले धंधा था घर पे हमारा दादा बाबा पर दादा करते थे ऐसा एक दिन आया बाढ़ जो सब हमारे खेत दह गए घर भी दह गए बाबा दादा भी मर गए हमारा तो हमारे प्रदेश कमाने के लिए तो रिक्शा हम चलाने लगे साल भर यहाँ पे रह गए हमारे बीबी हमारा बाबूजी वहाँ इंतजार कर रहा है जो हमारा ब और हमको यहाँ तो खुद खर्चा नहीं ऊपर हो रहा है हर चीज पे यहाँ दाम बढ़ा हुआ है जैसे कि मान लीजिए जो चावल थे अब अचानक दुगुना रेट चढ़ गया है अब हम कमाते हैं कम मजबूरी है हमारी कहाँ से उतना खा पाएंगे हम लोग गरीब आदमी घर गए तो हमारे बीबी है उसको देखे तो आंख से दोनों अंधी हो गई हो अपने आप आंख के रोशनी गायब हो गए उनकी अब हम खाएंगे या पैसा बचाएंगे कि बीबी को इलाज करेंगे अब जुगी लिए हैं किराए पे रह रहे हैं यहाँ ले लो ले लो चीन एक वही मार से मार ले लो यही मैं चाहता हूँ जो मेरे मंजिल करीब आए और मुझको प जैसे पहले मतलब थे एक साथ देखते थे और यहाँ आए तो कुछ नहीं बच रहा है ना पैसा खाने के लिए हो रहा है इन इंडिया 60 परसेंट ऑफ आवर पापुलेशन इज एंगेज्ड इन एग्रीकल्चर 80 परसेंट आर वर्किंग ऑन स्मॉल प्लॉट्स ऑफ लैंड बिटवीन वन टू टू एकर्स the last 40, 50 years have neglected these small farmers. The investments that have been made have been made in large farms and a particular model of agriculture which was heavily subsidized inputs 
was promoted in the north. But the other farmers, the small farmers need a different kind of assistance. They need knowledge brought to them about what will work and not work in this new world which is affected by climate change. The knowledge of what they should grow, when they should grow is now outdated. We need to bring new models to them. Their access to credit, their access to market. This lies at the heart of solving India's and in many other countries, the, the problem of growing more food because this is where there's still some potential. जैसे हम खेती करे लागे न, वो मन हमेशा लगी रही थे तो पूरा फसल अच्छी पैदावार दिए थे के, तो वही के अनुसार से नहीं साल भर खाए के रख लेते हैं और बाकी बेच के अपने मुट्ठी में हैं। पहले पुरुष महिला सब दिने काम करत रहे हैं, तो लेकिन वो मन पुरुष ही कहाँ हैं, किसान कहवावत रहे हैं, महिला किसान ना कहवाई जाति नहीं है। ये जब आरोह चालू भा है, वही महान हम सब का बतावा कहा कि दर्जा हो जाए जब किसानी खेती करत यह तो तुम कहे ना किसान माना जाता है। किसान का दर्जा हम पाए जाते ना तो जवन पुरुष कहाँ मिलत बाव वो का हम खुद ले। जैसे खाद भाई, बीज भाई, पैंग कहाँ लोन भाई, खेती के जवन हिस्सा बा हमरे सब का ही हो जाए कि नहीं हम सब महिला किसान हैं। सूखा पर चाहे बरसे सवनवा हमें अपने खेतवा में उपजे बधनवा धनवा के रंग बाटे धानी सब ही परेशानी मिटाई बे हल चलावे बदे पुरुष चलावत रहे महिला ना चलावत रहे कहाँ थे सब मेहरारू काम न हो इस सब बुरा माना थे कहाँ थे लेकिन जब हमार खेत बेकार होए वाला रहा है तब हम चार बजे रात में हैं हम चलाएं हैं हाँ खूब बढ़िया से नहीं क्यों दबाए क्यों नहीं जब ये खर पतवाल हो मन का निकल जाए तो हम रात वाला छोड़ दें अब दिन के नहीं हम हल चलाए थे और बहन का सिखाए थे और बहने सीख गए हैं सब अपना करते हैं जब पूरी महिला किसान बन जाइए हैं अपने अपने खेती बारी में हैं अनाज पैदा करी हैं तो कितना अनाज कितना सुविधाएं कितना आगे महिला और देश आगे जाए to farm, you need land, but the world's agricultural land is incredibly unequally owned between poor and rich and between women and men. In many developing countries, women grow the vast majority of food for their families, and yet they own a tiny fraction of the agricultural land they need. And so they're forced to grow it on marginal and common land. And that means local elites and investors have the power to oust them if a better business opportunity comes along. And that means communities are being pushed off the land that they depend upon for their food. And these deals are being called land grabs because the local communities have almost no say in the deal. They're getting very, very little compensation and they're seeing very few benefits from the new investors. Oxfam and partners are working around the world to stop deals like this and to protect people's land rights because poor people must have the right to the land that they farm. जमीन जीविका का सबसे महत्वपूर्ण संसाधन है। पैसा, नौकरी वो स्थाई नहीं रहता है। लेकिन जमीन पुष्ट दर पुष्ट है। तो अलग-अलग हम लोग जो लड़ेंगे, तो जमीन हमारे हाथ से निकलता चला जाएगा। इसलिए हम सभी को एक जुट होकर के जमीन को बचाना है। हम लोग जमीन को बारे में पुलिस से मार खाए हैं, बंदूक के मार खाए हैं, लाठी से मार खाए हैं, जेहल की हैं। जमीन रहेगा तो किसी के गुलाम नहीं बनेंगे। जमीन होना जरूरी है बाल बच्चों के लिए, आगु के बाल बच्चों के विकास के लिए, आगु के बाल बच्चों के बैठने के लिए, जोतने कोड़ने के लिए है एक मुठी चावल कल समय रोज एक मुठी डाली ला 
आ दू हजार बारह में दिल्ली जाए खातिर वो अपन बचा के रखे ला कि हमारा काम करी अपन हक ही सर छः महीना से जमा कर रहे हैं एक एक रुपया रू दो हजार बारह में हो जाए मेरे काफ़ी पैसा हम बचा लें हाँ कहीं धरेंगे तो सोचते हैं कि बच्चे निकाल के इसीलिए मैं हम गाड़ दिए हैं तो उसमें से तो नहीं निकालेगा ना बच्चा एक साल से एक मुठ्ठी चावल आ एक रुपया जमा करते हैं ये कलश में जन सत्याग्रह के लिए दिल्ली जाने के लिए महिला के लिए जमीन नहीं है हम लोग जमीन के मांग करने जा, जाते हैं ग्वालियर से पैदल दिल्ली In 2007, 25,000 people assembled in a city called Gwalior and they walked 300 kilometers to the capital of India, that is Delhi. These were people who were displaced from their land and resources. And their only demand was that give us enough land to cultivate food so that we can fill the stomach of our children and control our livelihood resources. We wanted to settle this problem, who controls the resources, whether the government or the people. Promises were made by the government. So in 2012, we are going to tell the government that the promise that they made in 2007, right, people who are cultivating land should get land, should be fulfilled. You see, no government can eradicate poverty unless they look into this issue of redistribution of livelihood resources like forest, land and water. No other sector can take millions of people and provide them employment. The only sector that can take so many people and provide them decent employment is the sector of agriculture. And agriculture should be controlled and managed by people who have the capacities and skills to work on the land. No one wants to live in a world where people are driven to riot because they can't afford a loaf of bread. Oxfam believes we've got to make three big changes to fix this broken food system. First, we've got to work together to prevent food crises and move swiftly when they do occur. Second, we have to invest in the agriculture of small-scale food producers so that they have secure rights and resources to grow enough food for their families and their communities. And third, we have to recognise that this planet and its ecosystems is the source of all our food and all our wealth. And most urgently, that means stopping climate change from devastating the potential of agriculture. We need to grow more food and we need to let the planet grow back its natural resources. And we humans need to grow a great deal in our ability to share what the planet gives us. And if we could do that, we'd be well on the way to a world that has enough to eat.